Hello and welcome to part three of my platformer tutorial series. So I'm just going to start off by uh, changing the Z order on this because currently it is higher than our player and so therefore our player will go under it. You can leave this as it is if you want but I'm just going to turn it to one. So currently our player is two which is the highest object on uh, in the scene. Our ladder is zero to be behind this object which is one. So. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make the camera follow the player. Um, <coughs> this isn't going to be like super smooth camera movement or anything, because that is generally just harder to do, and I haven't really done um, anything like that before. So we're just going to get the camera to follow the player, as well as adding in like a background and maybe some bushes and, and stuff like that. Um, in the next one, I'll probably do coins or something. Um, yeah, so uh, to do the camera, as you can see, we've got all of these um, events so far um, I'm just gonna start by you know just clearing these up a little bit so I'm gonna add a group here um, I'm gonna call this let's just call it uh, movement and this will just be um, so what a group is 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 like your you're grouping uh, things in into like one clump and so it's easier to uh, view and so I can just drag this up to the top here and then I can drag all of these inside of it and, and then I can minimize it and so if I'm not working on that but I don't want to keep scrolling up and down and up and down I can just put them into a group and all will be well so I'm just going to put all of these into a group like that so now we just have a group called movement I'm just going to save this real quick <coughs> right so now I'm going to add another group and I'm going to call it I'm just going to move my mic uh, camera is camera I guess and then we're going to add a, a uh, sub event to this camera because all of these are sub events to a group pretty much <coughs> so I'm going to uh, we aren't going to have a, a condition here um, because if you don't have a condition then the action will just be done um, like every frame uh, whereas if you have a um, condition then it will only happen whenever the um, condition is met whereas if it if you don't have one, it will just do it every frame, which is normally 60 times a second. But if you changed it in the properties here, you can change the minimum and maximum. Um, if you lower this, then it will generally just be, um, it will happen less times because it will be lower than 60. Um, so we're going to just go find cameras. So layers and cameras, and we're going to center the camera on an object. There's also camera zoom and camera angle and all this, but we're just going to do center the camera on an object. And this object is going to be the player. Now, you don't need to change these at all. You can leave them be. Um, but if you have multiple cameras in your scenes, which you know you probably won't, but if you do, you can select the, the camera. So let's say you're changing between two different cameras. Like you have two two different um, players, and one camera is on one side, and, and, and the other camera is on the other side. You want to... <coughs> um, <coughs> You want to have two um, different cameras, and then when you switch between them, you can switch between the two players. Uh, the layer, this is just just a base layer. It doesn't really matter. So, okay. And now if we play it, you will see that, we can, that the camera now follows the player. So, what about background objects and, like, sprites and stuff? Well, um, those are really easy. Those are just normal sprites or tiled sprites, uh, like these two. Um, <clears throat> let's just start with the background. Um, they're literally just sprites, but you don't interact with them pretty much. So let's just call this background, just for simplicity's sake. I can't really see my keyboard because my mic's in the way. So excuse any of this bad stuff or like misspelling or anything. So I'm just going to go to here and I'm going to go to art where I've saved all this stuff. Backgrounds and I'm just going to do BG, which is just this, uh, yeah. You can change these uh, so if your uh, background is like a <coughs> is like a square and it's a, a repeating pattern, um, you can set the default width and height. Um, but if it's a tile, uh, if it's if it's a tiled object, it doesn't really matter because um, you're just going to repeat it anyway. So we can drag this out, but then you'll notice, oh no, it's it's above our play and everything else we want it to be a background and so you literally just change the z order to something that is below everything i guess you can leave it at zero yeah yeah so that'll just put it to zero but then it's in front of our ladder 
we don't want that. So what I, what I generally do is just put it as like minus five because you won't really have anything more than minus five for you. And then you'll obviously make it, you know, really big to encompass everything. And then if you have your, your level, it'll, it'll be nice to know how big your level would be so you can just drag it out to that size. So now we have our background. We want to make our <coughs> we want to make our uh, like shrubbery and uh, clouds and stuff, don't we? So let's just call this uh, shrub. Let's say. <laughs> um, <coughs> so we're just gonna get a sprite. As I said, these are just the same as normal sprites, but you just don't interact with them. So uh, I think it might be under yeah. So we're just gonna get this bush open. Yep. And then apply. So now we can just drag it onto our scene and then just put it where we need it. So I'm going to put it here. You can also turn on the grid if you want to have additional help. But the grid isn't really helpful at the moment. Uh, what's this grid size anyway? 64 by 64. So that means the shrub is bigger than that. What about 70 by 70? Let's see if the shrub's that size. It is. So the, shru the shrub is 70 by 70, but this isn't. So I'm just going to turn off the grid for now and just do a pixel perfect uh, thing right here. There you go. So now we have our shrub. But when we play it, you'll see that um, the shrub is in front of our character. Now you, now you may want that. That might be an element in which you want, because some games do have um, like these kinds of things in front of the player. Um, but to add var variation, we can just copy. Oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to copy. So we can just copy, and then paste it. And then this one, let's say we could have minus two, and that would then be behind the player. So now we have a behind bush and an in front bush, and it just adds kind of like um, another dimension to your game, and it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool effect. So. <clears throat> now I've got that, we need to add clouds to, you know, make it nice. So we can add a sprite, and we can just call this cloud, let's say. And we're just going to add a sprite to this. This is basically the same thing as well. So, where is our cloud? We have three different types of clouds. You can add some variation by doing three different ones if you want. You can have three different objects. Or, if you only want one object, there's a really cool way of doing this, which I guess can also be done as a kind of tile map. Well, that's like not really a tile map, um, but I'll just show you now. So, if we have this here, we want to add um, another animation, and this will be like our second type of cloud. This will be cloud two, let's say. So we've got cloud one and cloud two, and then cloud three would be uh, this one. Okay, so now we've got our three different clouds. Um, and then we can just drag it in. So instead of having three different objects, we can just change the animation to this to one or two, and that will change this. And so you can then um, have one um, object for almost like a tile map, and then have each tile um, in each different um, animation. And then um, just uh, copy and paste it, just just to make like a row of these squares and then you can just drag them into you know the places where you want to put the tiles in, instead of doing these tiled sprites and that's kind of like a a nice little time map kind of thing which I think is a actually really really cool um, yeah so we're just going to add some variation here we're just going to do you know just some kind of cool things here going to have one for that one you know just doing you know just adding some some nice variation and all that because you know variation is good okay so now we have our nice good old um, our level pretty much <coughs> so we can also um, let's say we wanted to let's say we wanted to add boundaries to the to the level so they can't get out like anymore you can do that by um, making invisible boundaries by um, pretty much putting this um, child sprite here, but make it go behind the background, so make like a minus six on the Z order, and then that'll be acting as an invisible uh, wall, 
because even though things, um, even though objects are um, behind other objects, they will still uh, collide with objects in front of them. So you can make invisible ones like that, or or you can just make walls. So it's it's quite simple, and um, I'll I'll let you figure that one out for yourself, pretty much. So yeah, that was just a nice simple tutorial. Camera follow the player, and also just simple background elements, which are nice and easy to put in. Um, I'm not going to make another tutorial for two more weeks because I'm going on holiday to Germany. Uh, but when I get back, I'll be sure to probably do an enemies tutorial and then a coin collecting um, tutorial with variables. And then after that, I'll probably do scene switching and all that good stuff. And then a menu and then GUI and then probably um, I might do saving. I'm not sure. But all of that will come in the future. Um, yeah, make sure to uh, subscribe for all that. And I will see you in two weeks in the next um, episode. So, yeah. Have fun. Goodbye.